Thank you, Richard, for being here today. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. How did your drug addiction start? First, it started off, um, I started with alcohol. Um, I, I took my first drink um, when I was 12, and then um, it progressed from there. Um, it, um, I used methamphetamine, and I, um, when I got my, my ex involved with methamphetamine, um, he started dealing drugs, using drugs, um, and when he stopped, stopped doing, um, giving me drugs, I started prostituting myself for drugs and money, you know. When did you notice something was not right? Um, when I started losing jobs, when I started losing jobs, because I used to, I used to have a regular job too. At the same time, I used to live from, I used to, um, I used to live in France too, and um, I saw work, I was working, but I was losing jobs. Um, I used to I, I used to love the party, but the party life um, it came too much. Um, I started losing friends, so um, my my family didn't want nothing to do with me. So I I, I started processing myself even more, and. Um, it just it just came really really bad and just like I was very desperate. Why didn't you escape or seek help? Um, because I like the lifestyle, you know, were giving me nice things. Um, were, um, brought me two cars, and I my body was a tool, and you know, and I did that for a really long time until it's funny at the time and crazy, but like. I did like, you know, crazy things in the in club parking lots and prostitution and had sex and random people in the bathrooms and and I, I thought that was good cute, but it wasn't it really wasn't as I look at it. After interviewing Richard on day one, we realized Richard was going through drugs and addiction. He seems like a very nice guy. All those addiction and struggles has made Richard a stronger and a wiser man. So tell us about the time that you decided to stop this from. Um, when I got tired of being tired, I was tired of losing friends, l losing jobs, losing my family. My family didn't want nothing to do with it. Uh, <clears throat> um, I was in psychosis. My health was at risk. I started losing my, um, my, pretty much myself, my identity, um, and I had to take myself in treatment. Um, and now today, I live as a s sober, clean environment. Tell us about an event that you were prostituting yourself. Um, it was, there were many events. Um, I, one time, I was living with some friends in, in um, Anaheim, and um, and this guy. You know, he wanted me to, um, he used to give me loaded, I used to buy dope from him, and then he used to smoke me out. And um, one time, like, he was really um, forceful, you know. The only thing he did, he, 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 we never had intercourse, but he always wanted me to get him in head. And um, at that time, he didn't fucking, like, he, um, was living under the fucking bridge. That's how desperate I was. Under the f under the bridge, um, under the freeway. And I was fucking, I, it was like late at night and everything else, and these guys was there, and they fucking, I was G'd out, smoked out, and these guys joined in, and they fucking like, literally like, it was very graphic, but it was one, I, I was giving this guy, oral sex and one guy was behind me and I told him to stop because I was like because I felt like I couldn't breathe I was panic attack and one guy said no I'm not gonna stop and that's when I said to myself like what the fuck I'll get myself into which afterward I felt fucking dirty I felt fucking disgusted mm -hmm. I felt violated So this is my kitchen. This is where all uh, my cooking strategies, my shenanigans happen. 
uh, me and my friends. So tell us another story. Um, another story that when I was, um, I lived in Arizona for uh, a minute, mm -hmm. and I was with my, um, living with my friend, and I didn't know, like, I used to do meth with him, where he lived in Long Beach, California, but I didn't know he was a really involved in like the main person, um, dope dealer in this apartment building. Okay. So we had drugs all the time, and it was, um, and he was instead of smoking, and he was shooting up now. So it was a different, a, di a different beast. Thank you for sharing your own story. Overall, what's the message that you want to send to the boys and girls that are going through this at this moment? Well, the message that I want to send to the community um, for the boys and girls is to stay strong, um, to love their self, Definitely. to find your identity, um, and don't let anybody influence you and tell you that you can't do things and be successful. Have me here for a reason. So this is my garden to eat in, as we call it. Uh, I have a basketball court right there. Oh, great sports. Nice. You know, um, it's flowers. We have an orange tree, and we, um, you know, we just hang out here, do meetings and stuff. And um, yeah, um, I love this. I, I meditate here, and I, I'm a survivor. And um, I do this on a regular basis, on a daily basis. So, um, yeah. Interviewing Richard these past few days was a great experience from being a drug addict to becoming a survivor, an experience that myself and many people could learn from it. Next time you see someone that needs help, don't just offer your help. Be a hero. Be a mentor.